Hello everyone, this is Pal Ponder on Weather. In this update, we have a huge ridge that's developing with our storm track lifting well north. At the same time, we've got a coastal low that's developing off the east coast and the tropics are starting to heat up. I'm back everyone, how's it going out there? I took a couple days off and enjoyed the weekend and I hope everyone had a, a happy Mother's Day out there to all the mothers on Sunday. But we've got a lot to talk about this afternoon, so let's really start to kind of delve into the details. I'm gonna really expand the whole picture for you and kind of give you an overall summary of what's happening and actually include the tropics as well. So if we take a look at the overall satellite picture uh, for this afternoon, we can see we've actually got a kind of a, a developing coastal low that's off here off the East Coast. We've got a ridge of high pressure that's gonna be over the top and into parts of the Northeast. We've got this huge, ridge is going to be building across the midsection of the country with a lot of dominating heat and that's going to developing kind of a ridge over troubled waters type of setup with the lowering pressures underneath then we do find ourselves with kind of a a coastal low that's going to be developing it's already developed off the east coast parts of uh, the carolinas at the same time it's not even on your screen actually but we've got our first tropical wave of the season that's going to be moving across westbound as we're starting to get into that time of year, of course, the, you know, the hurricane season doesn't actually officially start until around June 1st. They start issuing advisories around the middle of May. So this is always the time of year that we start to kind of look at and highlight the tropics and see if anything's kind of brewing. And there are kind of some setups out there I wanted to let you made aware of, especially as we get into the middle of May, into that third week of May, as things start to look a little bit more active across uh, or across into the into the caribbean but let's take a look at the overall hazard map for this afternoon we've got numerous red flag warnings out there this is just going to be a dangerous setup again with all the bone dry conditions out here in west texas and new mexico and parts of arizona here I mean, we got single digit humidity values so the the high fire danger is going to be extremely high if not critical and then up here with our storm track lifting well north where all the severe weather is going to be taking place over the next couple of days we've actually got some flood watches uh in and around portions of north dakota and minnesota and right here they've got some wind advisories here with any developing supercells that do develop are going to be packing some high winds and some strong downburst winds as well as we got numerous heat advisories down here in uh, texas with those well above average temperatures and plenty of record temperatures that have actually fallen over the last couple of days. And I think that just continues for really kind of much of the week. So here's the setup this afternoon. We do have a pretty significant surface load that's going to be developing over portions of uh, Minnesota here. This is about a 984 surface load. It's got a lot of instability with it as well and a lot of lift associated with it. But at the same time, here's our ridge. It's going to be building across much of the central U.S. and moving eastbound over over the parts of the northeast here and then we've got that surface low that's to kind of developing underneath this is actually called what they call the rex blocking pattern and as this does and as this high pressure this 1032 high pressure starts to intensify this will actually help lower the pressures underneath and it just kind of festers it just kind of sits there and kind of spins and spins and spins and slowly this blocking setup will slowly drift it because we got high pressure over parts of Bermuda that will actually pinwheel it and shift it back towards the Carolinas and eventually actually heading towards uh, parts of uh, Florida. But today our main concern is actually at an elevated enhanced risk for severe weather for later on this afternoon into the early evening hours for parts of Minneapolis here into St. Paul going into Rochester, uh, Bloomington. Those areas could be on high alert this afternoon as developing isolated supercells starts to develop really about six o'clock time frame and then go into the evening hours. So be on high alert into Duluth going into Plymouth all the way into uh, parts of uh, Iowa there with a kind of a nasty squall line that I think is going to develop really into the overnight hours and this will push in into parts of uh, Wisconsin going into you know kind of moving eastbound and actually southeast as we get into the overnight hours and you know we're talking the wee hours of the morning three four five o'clock in the morning uh, time frame so but tornadoes are going to be a huge risk today so they did in fact enhance this at the kind of the noon update here with a 10 percent chance of seeing a possible tornado within this sector so 
Yeah, if you live anywhere around the uh, Minneapolis area, into the Rochester area, into the Bloomington area, this air, this activity is going to be rotating. You got a lot of shear at the lower levels. So yeah, we could be looking at some some or tornadic supercells going to be over this area as we get into that six o'clock time frame into the evening time frame. As this kind of a nasty squall line, I think is going to develop into into the evening hours into the overnight hours so let's take a look at the setup here of the overall 500 wind speed we've got this kind of a a negative tilt tilted trough that's going to be moving in coming in you know you can see the wind direction here coming in from the from the southwest here and where that lift is which goes from basically neutral to negatively tilted and right on the southeast side there that's where the wind's going to be changing directions and that's where the surface low right here is to to the northwest of there and underneath that we've got a lot of a spin we've got floodwaters to the north and then up down to the south on the south side that's where we have to be looking at for some isolated supercells could could be looking at some large hail producers as well into the evening hours into the uh, kind of the overnight hours with a kind of a nasty squall line i think it's going to be you know kind of developing into the into the evening hour so let's take a look at the setup so here's the kind of the radar about six o'clock in the afternoon so we can actually see these little bubblers starting to form i mean this is going to be a a big a main concern as we get into the to, to the evening hours so these little isolated supercells you never want to really see this on radar because these little bubblers that do pop up all these are going to be severe storms and and with the separation here i think that's where we're going to have a little bit more tornadic supercells are going to be taking place some very uh, large hail could be under under the table and some of those downburst winds with any any supercells that do develop underneath that uh could be some pretty strong wind gusts of that 60 70 miles an hour but as we get into the evening hours you can actually see with this kind of a nasty squall line that's going to be developing and moving more or less east you know to southeast and all the all all along this squall line this is about four o'clock in the morning into the overnight hours we're gonna to have to be concerned in central wisconsin going into parts of iowa there with this uh, these little supercells that try to form into a squall line could be looking at some 70 mile per hour uh, downburst winds in this type scenario you could be looking at some tornadoes along the leading edge of this front and any separation here uh, we could be looking at some large hail some say quarter size hail and even some golf ball size hail is probably not out out of the realm of possibilities with this uh, particular setup you know kind of as we get into the evening hours but here's the setup i mean the main story this week is going to be a kind of a dominating ridge i mean i know it's only may but there's plenty of records it's going to be falling for much of the country and here's just the temperature anomalies as we get into tuesday but this really doesn't change for most of the week with you know 5 10 upwards to 15 even 20 above average temperatures for a good chunk of the central u.s and those well above average temperatures lift all the way up into the great lakes and actually lifts all the way up into, into uh, parts of canada here and then the only cool game in town is really underneath that surface low that's going to be just close enough off the east coast going to be bringing some cooler conditions some high waves along the coast and some windier conditions really right along the coast but yes those temperature anomalies with the cloud cover and the rain around are going to keep them down for really much of the week as this system kind of just pinwheels and really takes its sweet time and it's really probably not going to be until say friday time frame by the time it actually pinwheels across and makes it into a uh, florida area but at the same time we've got a pretty significant trough that's going to be diving in into the pacific northwest going to be bringing well below average temperatures for them so it's going to be complete opposite if you want to experience any cooler conditions all you got to do is head west and head to the northwest because they've still got plenty of cool air uh, on the on the table so let's take a look at some of these wind speeds because here's here's the setup as we get into tomorrow afternoon i mean 50 knots is right around 58 miles an hour so you can actually see this surface low right off here off the east coast with those higher winds just kind of right, right along the coast here i don't i think mainly the high winds really kind of stay offshore but this is still close enough or we're going to see in the you know kind of coastal impacts uh from this system you know as it kind of just meanders around and you know heads towards virginia through the carolinas just kind of like right off the east coast here and it will more or less pinwheel further south and then eventually head into florida area really kind of by the time we get into say friday even into the into the saturday uh time frame so 
But here's the setup for tomorrow, kind of kind of the same deal with this MCS really meandering, moving through. Now it'll be setting up over portions of Wisconsin here, getting into uh, Milwaukee and to Madison. And basically with at the same time, we have another risk down here off in the extreme parts of West Texas. This area has been extremely dry. But it's also got a very active dry line so this is more of a conditional risk but any supercell that is able to pop the cap in this particular environment could be some large hell producers so that's why they have that slight risk in play uh so i mean we could be a degree or two off from you kind of breaking the cap in this area but it does appear we do kind of break it as we get into the evening hours again right along the dry line this is far west texas into fort stockton back into the lubbock area as we get deeper into the to the afternoon the evening hours and we can take a look at the simulated satellite and kind of highlighting of that kind of the you know mesoscale convective system moving across into parts of wisconsin here with you know with some heavier rain showers and some stronger storms and that's why they've got that slight risk uh, for uh, portions of Tuesday. At the same time, we've got that dry line set up out here off into West Texas. So we have to look at some of these little bubblers that are able to pop the cap into the afternoon hours. Those could be turning some, some large hail producers and when then they collapse, have some big downburst winds associated with them kind of as well. But yeah, same setup on Wednesday. So that same instability with numerous systems are gonna come across in the midsection of the country this week so another active day and another active setup Pl plenty of dry air underneath it so much of texas really besides the dry line is really bone dry uh, oklahoma kansas much of the southeast really but well all the instability is kind of well to the north here with with another disturbance is going to be moving across so we even into wednesday so we'd be good looking at some strong storms producers into the afternoon hours into the evening time frame but underneath that coastal low, that's pretty big, pretty high winds out here. Like I said, mainly it's going to be well offshore, but it's still going to be close enough. We'll have coastal impacts with some of those higher wind, higher uh, waves, upwards to 10, 15, even some 18 foot waves out here, just right along the coast here into Virginia, bats it back into North Carolina, eventually heading into parts of uh, South Carolina as we get into you know deeper in, into the week time frame. But it doesn't end there because we had we have another short wave that's going to be coming across and this one actually could be even more the most significant of the week really besides today so it's they already have an enhanced risk uh for severe weather up here but you can see this pretty significant uh trough that's going to be moving again right along the upper upper great lakes here into parts of uh, the Dakotas and to Minnesota again at the same time we've got our little surface load that's going to be diving across and eventually headed into parts of Georgia here back into Florida but underneath that we've got a pretty significant another powerful surface low and that's going to create the lift that's going to be needed into the uh, afternoon hours back into the evening hours with some more strong supercells going to be on, on the table as we get into the evening time frame and in fact the storm prediction center has already highlighted enhanced risk for severe weather up here for a good chunk of the same areas in the Dakotas back into Minnesota so this whole area is going to be on high alert this week <laughs> it doesn't end there because we have yet another setup going into friday so we're talking four or five days a row and a lot of the same areas that have the flash flood watches today so this this whole area is about in parts of the dakotas going into parts of nebraska here into minnesota back into friday time frame is going to be hit again with some more strong storm producers going to be on the table with just a kind of series of disturbances that's going to be moving in so yeah, with this particular setup, we've got a pretty strong windshield or about 5,000 feet up in the atmosphere. You can actually see the surface low over the Dakotas here. So this main stage is going to be right here into Minnesota, into Wisconsin, going into your, you know, kind of your Thursday evening time frame. So a lot of shear is going to be on the table. So this whole area is going to be rotating again. So you're going to, have to be looking at for some strong supercells are definitely going to be on the table. But like I mentioned, the main impacts this week are pretty, the, the dominating is going to be the dominating ridge over a good chunk of the country of the central U.S. And that pinwheels across the Great Lakes, heading into parts of the Mid-Atlantic here and well into Canada with well above average temperatures. You're only cooler because you're going to be nearer that surface low in parts of the southeast. And this is the overall seven day uh, temperature anomalies or what you're going to be experiencing really for the next seven days and there's that pr pretty significant trough that's going to be diving into the pacific northwest with those well below average uh, temperature anomalies for them 
with all that instability with those series of troughs is going to be digging in it's going to be pretty pretty wet for them as well but let's take a look at the tropics because this is the time of year that we always kind of highlight this area but down here this is these are the sea surface temperatures and you really kind of need about uh, 26 z to actually you know kind of that's mainly a threshold 26 c is about 78 degrees fahrenheit you kind of need that to the water's warm enough for some sort of say tropical development and you can actually see with with the trough that's going to be pinwheeling across there is a band there's like a slight you know area that's just right on the borderline just kind of right on the borderline right now so if this was june I would be probably more prevalent if this may actually develop into a subtropical feature, but I think it's just gonna run out of time and the pressures aren't gonna be able to get low enough and the temperatures, the sea surface temperatures are gonna be just about borderline. So I'm not really expecting this particular area to actually say go subtropical type feature, uh, but we are looking at that wave that's gonna be coming across off into Africa, where some of the pressures are going to be starting to lower uh, in the Caribbean, especially as we get into, say, the, the middle of the month time frame. So if we kind of look at that setup or where we typically see storm development this time of year is more or less always in close. So we don't have one for May because, you know, really, but the last seven years we've had a storm for the last seven years. So we got to be high on high alert in this area. So that's why we're kind of looking at uh, things might be on the table uh, down the line. And one of the things that I'm looking at is these particular setups right here. So we have that trough that's going to be, you know, again, off the East Coast, going to be diving across into parts of Florida. We've got different ensemble members try to take this in, but I don't think it actually becomes a, like a subtropical feature. There we got that wave that's going to be coming off the African coast. But we also have this area of instability down here into parts of uh, Central America. So this is the area that we have to kind of watch out for this time of year as this kind of meanders and kind of festers. And as we get kind of deeper uh, tropical uh, waters developing, this could be lower in the pressures long enough for something to kind of form as we get deeper into the middle of the month. Because one of the things I kind of look at this time of year is your vertical velocity index back out here into the open waters of the Caribbean. You can see kind of around the 16th of the month there. Yeah, there's some some blue here showing, hey, we got a lot of upward rising motion air. So you need upward rising motion air. And if we've got storms to kind of hold together in this area between the say the 16th and right along the 21st of May timeframe, over a period of time, we could have what they call Central America gyra starting to develop in this region. And that could be setting the stage to, again, lower some pressures uh, underneath and really starting to build. Because look at the setup by the time the 17th rolls around in May. I mean, all these reds here, this is the precipital water uh, available, pre precipital water in the atmosphere. So when you start to look at some of these reds, yeah, that's about two inches of rain per hour. Some of these blues, that's getting some of these into the purple region. That's about two and a half inches. So that's some deep tropical moisture moving, going to be moving in around this time next week back into, say, Jamaica, going into the Cayman Islands, getting more into the central a part of the Caribbean here. And at the same time, we got that lot of vertical lift. So that's why we're having all those well above average rains are gonna be entering the picture. In fact, if we take a look at the, the ensemble members over the next two weeks of the latest uh, GFS ensembles, I mean, look at that guys, that's a lot of deep tropical moisture gonna be impacting good chunk of the Caribbean with a good three to four inches you know, above average what you typically see this time of year. So whenever you see that, that's kind of look it kind of throws up some some uh some makes makes awareness saying hey these these waters fester long enough uh we could be looking at some lowering pressures by the time we get into that third week of may and we've had an early name season storm for the past seven years in a row the last one was last year was actually about may 22nd and this is actually showing signs of it could happen again so we're going to be watching this area down here into the Caribbean as this really this starts to get going here by by next week with the upward rising motion going to be over that area and again a lot of these areas that just kind of fester over that same area for an extended period of time with that Central American gyro and eventually that could set the stage or some sort of tropical entity trying to come up with our first name storm of of the year so hey i appreciate you guys uh, watching do like this video definitely leave your comments below and don't forget to subscribe to my channel catch the latest update where i protect you before 
in after storm.